now we are going to start with a unit that is the life under microscope. See, the, the, there are variety of organisms ranging from very minute to very big as you can see. And you know that we have a very, very tiny microscopic bacteria and if we compare to a big huge elephant, so they are all categorized under the category of organisms. So here in this chapter we are going to study about life under microscope that we are going to study about the microorganisms. So microorganisms are the one, micro means very small. So they are the tiny, tiny or you can say they are the tiniest organisms that uh, we see that they are too small that we can even not see with the, we cannot see with their, our naked eye because they are too small. So microorganisms are those which can't be seen with naked eye, the reason being they are too small in size. So how we see them, them we have to uh, use a certain instrument that is microscope to observe them. And we know that microscopes are again of different types, they are a compound microscope, there is an electronic microscope just depending upon the use of lenses and micro magnification. That means how large they can form a picture. So this is what is a microscope and you know that you know that the one the one volunteer who actually uh, looked for the microorganism for the first time was none other than A. V. Leunhock that is Anton van Leeuwenhoek. He was the one who discovered microscope and he was the one who visualized first microorganism uh, in the pond of water in a drop uh, you can say in the water uh, which was present in a pond. So he was the one who discovered the, these tiniest organisms that is A. V. Leeuwenhoek and he is the discoverer of microscope even. And you know that the branch which deals with the study in which we study about the structure, we study about the growth, nutritional requirement, everything about the microorganism that branch is called as microbiology. So microbiology is a branch of bio in which we get to study about the microscopes, their habitat, their nutritional requirement, their uh, you can say uh, how they look like, everything that uh, falls uh, like, like everything that comprises uh, of uh, everything about uh, microorganism is just studied under the microbiology. So we encounter many kind of microorganisms, basically the microorganisms are bacteria, viruses, fungi, algae and protozoans. So these are the categories under which microorganism has been classified that is bacteria, virus, fungi, algae and protozoans. You must have, uh, you must be familiar with these terms. So now we are going to study about them uh, one by one and before I start I just want to tell you that uh, see the microorganisms are present everywhere. They can present in a very very hot condition also and they can even present in a very very cold condition also. So they are, they can actually survive uh, in every type of climate and moreover you know that they are found everywhere like they are on my skin, they are inside my body, they are on my skin, they are everywhere on my clothes, everywhere. So we cannot have a such kind of condition which is free from microorganisms. So they are found everywhere. So starting with the detailed study of the first microorganism that is the bacteria. So if you talk about bacteria that how many cell actually a bacteria is formed of, so they are single cell that means they are unicellular. They are formed of only one cell is performing all the functions in their body, so they are unicellular. And if we talk about the size, their size ranges from very small to a very big and a very big uh, this thing, very big uh, size in case of bacteria is 100 microns. So it ranges from 0 0.2 micron to 100 micron. And if we talk about the shape, they are of different types. Basically the shapes are, they can be rod shaped like this, they can be comma like this, they can be spiral. The spiral one is also called as spiralium, an example. And uh, they can be spherical also like this. And the comma one, the example is vibrio, this is bacilli. So these are the common examples. So if we talk about that how bacteria looks like, so it actually contain these things. So see, it is a basic structure of bacteria in which we can see uh, there is a cell wall, there is a cell membrane, there you can see a fluid that is the cytoplasm. There is no well, nuclear material lies naked, it is not enclosed in a nucleus. So no well defined nucleus, just a nuclear material is there. 
and we have this thread like structures that is flagella and because it is a prokaryotic cell so it doesn't possess any organelles also. So this is a cell wall, you, we have done the outer covering, cell membrane inner to it, cytoplasm the liquid inside, no nucleus as you can see nuclear material is naked, no organelle, nothing specific is found inside and they have a thread like structure of flagella which help in the movement. So this is what is the structure of the uh, bacteria. Now moving on to another thing that how they actually feed. So we see that some bacteria contain the uh, photosynthetic pigment in them and they are capable of photosynthesizing so they are autotrophs. But most of them uh, are lacking chlorophyll or any other photosynthetic pigment so they cannot photosynthesize. So they depend upon autotrophs for nutritional requirements so they are heterotrophs. And how they obtain? They are basically, basically saprophytes that means feed on dead and decaying matter or parasites that means they live in or on the body of host for fulfilling its nutritional requirement. So some are autotrophs, some are heterotrophs and in heterotrophs the subcategories they are the feeding on dead and decaying matter that is saprophyte or living inside or on the body of host and for fulfilling its nutritional requirement that is the parasitic ones. And if we talk about respiration, the bacteria are both types, they uh, respire in presence of oxygen that is they can be aerobic also and the some are anaerobic that they don't need oxygen for the survival for respiration. So they can, there can be an aerobic bacteria also and they can be an anaerobic one also. Aerobic respiring in presence of oxygen, anaerobic which is respiring in absence of oxygen. And if we talk about growth, like the way they develop better. So they develop better in a warm and humid environment. They need warm and a humid environment. There is actually an appropriate temperature range uh, where they develop and that is approximately a, you can say uh, equal to uh, or you can say a condition where the warm uh, which is warm and humid. And if we talk about that how they reproduce. So they reproduce by a basic method that is binary fission and you know that binary fission is a process in which uh, one cell breaks up into two daughter cells exactly of same size and same everything. So that is what is a binary fission. And you know that whenever a binary fission, uh, whenever a bacteria enters into a cell or whenever there is an unfavorable condition, suppose this is a bacteria and there is an unfavorable condition around, it is going to uh, secrete a hard covering outside which is going to protect this bacteria in unfavorable condition. And this protective covering which is uh, formed outside it, a uh, hard covering which is going to protect it under unfavorable condition is particularly called as cyst. So this is what is basic uh, about uh, bacteria, I think you got it, that it is unicellular, size too small, that is 0.2 to 100 microns, shape can be rod, comma, spherical, uh, spiral, structure, cell wall, cell membrane, cytoplasm, no well-defined nucleus and a thread, that is flagella and uh, may secrete and how hard outer covering that is cyst in uh, un, uh, unfavorable condition. Nutrition can be autotrophs and but if they are heterotrophs then they are saprophytes or parasites basically. They can, they respire in presence of oxygen and in absence that is aerobic, anaerobic, both are found. Growth, warm and humid environment is required. Reproduced by generally by binary fission in which one bacteria give rise to a two daughter bacteria that is the two daughter cells. And cyst I already told you. So this is the detailed study of the bacteria up to your level, right. So now we will be starting, uh, starting with another microorganism. So just do these basic definitions and do this bacteria and please practice the diagrams. I keep on telling you to practice diagrams because uh, diagrams are a key to success in biology. So please practice the diagrams. As I am not uh, so um, skilled in making diagrams but you make yourself right. So just practice them and uh, this is the bacteria and please do the examples of also of the shapes of the bacteria as I told you right. So this is what is a bacteria about.